It's good to have you all here this morning. As I was greeted as I came in this morning by one Ron Bishop, he said, hey, he said, that really makes an improvement. So, you know, <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a nice thing to say about a guy coming in. And he says, he needs to make some improvement on my face. But uh, that's Ronnie Bishop for us, though, right? We're, today we're going to be looking at the book um, of Ephesians. And we're going to be looking, and I'll probably be jiggling this thing because there's some like little fuzzies in here that are kind of tickling my nose. So if I jiggle it there, that's what's going on. Um, but we're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. Uh, and we're going to be looking uh, at this. The, the book of Ephesians can be broken down. Um, it can be broken down different ways. You could look at it in splitting up in two different ways, you know, the first half and the second half. Uh, or it can be um, broken down as the first part would be uh, chapters 1, verses 1 and 2 would be like a greeting from Paul. The second part would be who we are in Christ and what we have in Christ. That would be chapter 1, 3 through 321. The third would be looking how we are to live as children of God. That would be chapters 4, 1 and uh, verse 1 through 6, 9. The fourth part would be putting on the armor and using God's armor. That would be 6, 10 through 17. And, of course, fifth would be Paul's encouragement for prayer and farewell to the church. And uh, so we're not going to cover all that, so I don't want to scare you. We're just going to be looking at the first 14 verses and uh, that would be like the second part of that, that discussion right there. Uh, and then we're going to briefly touch on the third part and the fourth part about that. We're going to be looking how we are to live, and then the fourth part using God's armor. And so let's open in a word of prayer before we get started. And hopefully I can make it through with this, this mask up here. And let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity and privilege to be here in your house. As we celebrate this, uh, this holiday weekend, the day of independence yesterday, uh, and Lord, uh, the benefits that we have received from that. We can gather here uh, in freedom and worship as we please. And Lord, we just thank you for all the, the benefits that we have received from this great country. And God, as we look at your word today, Lord, we're going to see that we're going to see, receive some incredible benefits that are coming through Christ uh, from God the Father. And Lord, I pray that you would just be glorified through your word today. I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. So this book, this letter is written to a Gentile believers, first and foremost. Ephesus would have been located in present-day Turkey. Uh, Paul would have said he would have been speaking to the saints and uh, the, the faithful in Jesus Christ. And so let's read the first 14 verses of Ephesians chapter 1. Everybody hear me okay? Hopefully this is making good sound. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein we hath made, he hath made us accepted and the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to the good, his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which were in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. In whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest, that's a down payment, of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. As I was reading through this, I was really struck by verse number three, how it spoke to me. In verse number three, 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Not realizing, as I've read through this many times, that Paul was going to give a list of those heavenly blessings that we have. And they are in, through Christ. And as I was looking through this, I was like, wow. That's, uh, and, Mark, and Mark taught on this here, and I should have known better, right, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> and so, and he probably thought the same thing, and you know, but you know, sometimes you're just reading through, and how you know how things just strike you. I mean, Mark just went through the book of Ephesians, this study on Sunday nights. This is you know last year, and so you, you know, then you read through this, and all of a sudden something just comes out. I have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, all, not not some, all. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, because that's who he's talking to, you have those same blessings. And what are those blessings? Verse number 3, he continues, actually verse number 4, says here, According as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. God chose you. <laughs> God chose you. Jesus said in, in John 15, 16, he said, I, I have cho you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and that you would go and forth and bear much fruit. He chose us. The, the book of Deuteronomy, God tells the children of Israel how he, how he chose them. You know, you think, uh, well, does God really choose? Well, yeah, it's all through Scripture. And in Deuteronomy, it says here, <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 6 through 11, For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God, the Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. For you are the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you. Wow. Because the, he chose us because he loved us. And because he would keep his oath, which he had sworn unto your fathers, and hath, to the, and hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the, the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments unto a thousand generations. Wow. <laughs> and repayeth them that hate him to their face. To destroy them, he will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt keep, therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I have commanded you this day to do them. God has chosen. He is, why did he choose Abraham? Because <laughs> he did. Because he did. It was his great love that he chose. And, and he, you know what? He has chosen you. You are chosen by God. I, you know what? You are blessed in all spiritual, in all spiritual, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places because God has chosen you to be part of His family. He has chosen us. He is also here, as we look here, says that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Holy and without blame before him in love. Holy means set apart unto. God would have us set apart unto him. Without blame, nothing chargeable to our account. How can that be? How can that be? That we can be holy with him. Well, you know what? It, it, it took something special to make us holy, and it was Christ and his blood. Hebrews 9 says this here in 22 and 24. says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Speaking of the sacrifices that the Jewish people had. Verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Without sin. We're going to be holy and without blame before him. He has blessed us in, with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places because he has chosen us 
And he is, is going to make us be able to stand before him holy and without blame. I, I, I mean, maybe this doesn't excite. I was excited when I was looking. It's like, wow, wow. And then you're like, huh, I don't deserve that. You don't. But he, he chose to love you that way. Chose to love you that way. What an incredible God we have who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Isn't that awesome? And it gets better. Verse number 5 of Ephesians 1. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I was born into the Miller family. If you look at my daddy and my mom, especially my daddy, <laughs> you can tell I'm a Miller. But God chose to adopt us into his family, the adoption of children. And, and you know, it, I am his. I take his name upon me. When I was born, I was Robert Dale Miller. I took my, my, my dad's name and with, and with the last name, Miller. And God has made us his children. He has blessed you. You're, you're, you've been adopted into the family of God. Let me read Romans for you. Romans 8. It says here in verse number 15 of Romans 8, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, Father. It was a term of endearment, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Joint heirs with Christ? When you are adopted into the family, you know, when you're adopted, you're legally part of that family. The name and all the, all the benefits go along with it, right? And if then children and heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so, be, if so be that you suffer with him, that you also may be glorified together with him. <laughs> we are joint heirs with Christ. God has placed us into his family. He's taken us. He's put his name upon us. And he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. He has chosen us. He has he uh, made us so that we can stand holy without blame before him because of the shedding of blood. He has predestinated us. He has predetermined that he's going to make us part of his family, the family of God. Verse number 6. To the praise of the glorious grace wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Remember at the baptism, Jesus goes in, gets baptized, he comes up, he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased came from the heavens, right? Beloved son, you are accepted in that same group. That's your family unit. That's your family circle. You are part of the beloved of Jesus Christ. You are, part, you are in part and parcel with him. You are beloved. You know, you're loved of God. <laughs> if you are a believer today in Jesus Christ, you are loved of God. You are part of his family. Part of his family. And if we think about that that adoption process, you know, a lot of us would probably be happy if Bill Gates would say, "Hey, Matt North, I want to adopt you. You got my name, you know, you're now you're Matt Gates now." And you get, you're part of the, if any of my children, you get the same share in everything that I have, that they have, you get the same equal share. How about that? We'd all still about, woohoo, right? <laughs> don't you know, don't be beggars. Do you know whose family you're in? The King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the creator of all things. That is your family. <laughs> you should say, 
Amen. Amen. Woohoo! <laughs> Better than Bill Gates. Better than Bill Gates. I had a friend. He had adopted children. I loved his comment. He said, he said to me one time, he said, you know what? He's putting in perspective the kids who were adopted in and kids who were not adopted in. He said this, um, those, to those who weren't adopted and you had kids, he said, your parents had you, but I was chosen by my parents <laughs> for those who were adopted in. You know, you were just born into the family, but they were chosen into the family. God has adopted us into this family. He has made us a part of the beloved. Not because we're so special, we're so great, right? <laughs> but because of his great love towards us. Galatians put it this, this way. Paul has talked with the Galatian believers. Let me just flip here. Not there, that's not Galatians. I had a little sticky note. Ron told me to put sticky notes in here so I could do that. I guess I'm going to have to. Oh, here it is. It says here in Galatians 4.4. 4, ah, I didn't put a sticky note there. That's why it's not there. <laughs> Galatians 4.4 4 says this. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman made under the law to redeem them that were under the law that he might receive the adoption of sons. Because ye are sons of God, hath, he has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son, and of a son, than an heir of God through Christ. You're an heir of the king. You're an heir of God, the Father. And he has made us accepted in the beloved. Now it says here in verse number 7 back in Ephesians. It says here, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. We have been blessed with all spiritual blessings and heavenly places in Christ because of His redeeming work that He did. His redeeming work that He did through the, His blood and it caused us to have the forgiveness of sins. Realize it didn't come without a cost. It, it, it cost a lot. Here's a definition of redemption through what, what Webster would say. The act of freeing by the paying of a ransom or a price. The redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins. It, it took a redeeming work of what Christ did. Christ paid a ransom. <laughs> he paid a ransom for us so that we could be part of His family, even the forgiveness of sins. The forgiveness of sins. So there was an incredible cost. And as I'm going to get to later on here, Paul says later, what worthy of the calling wherewith you've been called to. Oh, wow. Wow. Walk worthy of the vocation, the King James says, but it means the calling which you've been called by. God has called us into His family. He has called us into His family. There was a great price paid. Walk worthy of that. That means live out your life. You know, walking... <laughs> You know, the act of walking, it's movement, it's constant motion. It is your lifestyle. It is what you're doing. Walk worthy of that. Let's look here at what Ephesians also says, says later on here. Ephesians 2, 4 through 8. But God, who is rich in mercy... For his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us, quickened us again together with Christ, by grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us through Christ. Of course, it was... By grace, you are saved through faith. 
in that not of yourself. It was a gift of God. <laughs> Christ came and God gave a gift to us so that we could be part of His family and so that we could be with Him forever in the ages to come. Back to verse number 8 of Ephesians 1. It says here, Wherein he hath abounded toward us with all wisdom and prudence. Prudence is living out, living out and being able to know how to live. If you go to the second part of this book, it'll tell you how to live. With loneliness, with meekness, not being soon angry. <laughs> I could go on and on, but I don't want to go. That's another study. <laughs> but how we are to live. Well, that's that prudence. He has given us all wisdom. He's given us His Word so that we can understand how to live. How, to, how to, we should live in Christ. So He's given us incredible wisdom. He is also, verse number 9, having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to the good pleasure of His will. It was God's good pleasure that we would be accepted in as it continues on talking about Gentile believers. And that's who he's talking to here with the Ephesian believers here. And so he made known the mystery, and that can be found, that mystery can be found in, in Ephesians 3, 1 through 6. It says here, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given to me you to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote in a fewer words. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto the holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel." It's not just, it wasn't just written for Jewish people. This was written that the mystery was made known unto us that we as Gentile believers would be fellow heirs. Fellow heirs. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places and made us to be co-equal heirs even with the children of God, the children of Israel. Back to Ephesians 1.10. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in Him. He's going to gather all things together. You know, we're, we're, it's not going to be Jewish people up in heaven and Gentiles up in We're going to be all one of the same family, of the family of God. One. He's going to gather together all in one as that same family. It says here in verse number 11, In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him which worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. He's not only put you in his family, he's given you an inheritance. What's an inheritance? It's something you receive, right? Maybe after, you know, if, you're, if, somebody, if your family dies and somebody's family dies and you receive an inheritance. Well, an inheritance, you know, might not last long. You know, but it's, but it's something that you're given. God has given us an inheritance. And it says, I want to show, um, take you to 1 Peter, because I think it's a, real, it's a beautiful picture here of this, what, what he has given to us. Um, 1 Peter. I didn't mark all my things. I had thought I had marks on all my pages. I didn't have marks on all my pages. It says here, um, verse number 3 of 1 Peter 1, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His, His abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. We have an inheritance that is not going to fade away. 
you know, say you, you say you inherit a thousand dollars, you know, and, and how long will that last? Well, it might not last real long, right? In heaven, we have an inheritance that's not going to fade away. It's not going to go away. It's there. We're going to rule and reign with him. We're going to be in heaven. We've been, we've been blessed with all blessings in heavenly places, spiritual blessings. And he has given us all these things. And he has given us an inheritance. You know, we're, we have something to look forward to, don't we? An inheritance with him. We've inherited to eternal life. Verse number 13, back in Ephesians. Actually, we'll read verse number 12. That we should be to the praise of His glory, first trusted in Christ. Verse 13. In whom also you trusted, after that you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom after, also after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of His glory. So we were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So we're, we're kind of like signed, sealed, and UPS delivered. <laughs> we are signed, sealed, and delivered. We are sealed by the hand of God with the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to have that stamp of approval on your forehead or wherever it's going to be at, is that I am the child of God. He has sealed us with His Holy Spirit of promise. Therefore, knowing that we are the children of God, it is the earnest money, the down payment money. Whenever you went to go get your house, you had to put some earnest money up. Are you going to pay for this house? The banks say, I want 20% down to make sure you're going to pay for this house. So you've got to put that down payment down, don't you? And so then you can, therefore, you can, they're saying, okay, he's good for it. He's good for the money. He's got enough. If he got that much, he can pay for the, he'll about to pay the rest. If they don't, they get the 20%, they got, you know, they got the 20% and get the house and they still wake out. <laughs> but you think about that. That was a down payment saying, you know what? He's good for it. God's saying, I have given you the down payment of the Holy Spirit so that you know that I, you are a children of God. As it said in Romans, that you, with your, his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Whenever you feel the Holy Spirit's conviction, whenever you're out there in the garden, you're pulling weeds out, and you feel the Holy Spirit's conviction, say, thank you, God, because I know I am your child, because you have not left me alone. Right, Bob? He has not left us alone. Those, he wants us to pull those weeds out, because that's what the Holy Spirit does to us. And it bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God because you have the conviction of the Holy Spirit in your life. Be thankful. You've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. And, and he has given you all. <laughs> Not some. He didn't give Matt some. Didn't give Bob some. Didn't give Mike some. Didn't give some Larry some. Tina or Sue. He gave all to all who are believers in Jesus Christ. All to all who are believers in Jesus Christ. He has blessed us. And He has given us this down payment. And as I read there, I guess I'd, I don't know if I turned to that yet or not. I guess I better turn there because that was Romans. Let me just read that to you. I guess I was quoting. It says here, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption where we cry, I have a father. The spirit itself bearing witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And of course, I read this before, I guess. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if so be that you suffer with him, that you may be also glorified with him. You know, in this life, there is going to be suffering, isn't there? There is going to be suffering. Christ, if Christ suffered, shouldn't we, why, why should we think it odd that Christians would suffer? Christ suffered, and therefore, we are also going to suffer all, you know, all who would live godly in this world will suffer, won't they? Persecution. And so, but he has given us his spirit that we can realize and know that we are the children of God. We are his. He is ours. <laughs> we are the children of God. Now, what I want us to look at is what Paul has to say later. He tells them who they are. You have all these spiritual blessings. All these spiritual blessings. 
It might be ringing just a touch here. All these spiritual blessings. And he says, like in the second part, because let me just take you to the end of, of chapter 3 and see what he says. Verse 21, after, uh, it says, Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. He completed a thought, didn't he? He told, it who, he told them who they were. Now he's going to start, and I think I'm really ringing, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> and it says here, verse number 1 of chapter 4, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you were called. This is who you are in Christ. You've been chosen. You're going to be holy without blame. You're adopted into the family. You're part of the beloved. He has given you all wisdom and understanding. He has given you the forgiveness, redemption, the forgiveness of sin. He has, he has gathered together all in one in Him. He has given us the Holy Spirit of promise that we can know we are His children. And he also and then He says, now that if you look at that, that's kind of like the first part. The second part, He says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you, beg you, that you walk worthy of the calling which you've been called to. You've been called to be a, you're called a child of God. Walk worthy of that. Walk worthy of that. He begged them. You've been adopted into God's family at a great cost. At a great cost. Live a life worthy of that calling. Paul reminds them again, chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Walk as dear children. Walk as dear children. You think of your, your dear children. I have three dear children. I have to be careful. I have one who has dimples who is extra. <laughs> she's not extra special, but she's a special little girl. She's daddy's little baby girl. I call her baby girl. I have Nathan Boy Blue. I have, I have Jessica is my little girl, and Emily's my baby girl. And that's their names. That's their nicknames. You know, and, and, you know, and walk as dear children. You know, what, the, the dear child is some a kid, a kid who's, you know, who follows along and, and is obedient. Not like me, sometimes rebellious. <laughs> um, if mom and dad are watching this, so if they're going to watch this on tape, uh, yeah, mom had to, she would say, somebody go get the spatula for me. I'm going to give Chuck and Ken a whooping. Well, I guess who was the first one to run to go get it? Oh, but when it was my turn, man, I was out the door. <laughs> Walk as dear children. You, know, you think of a dear child walking with her daddy, holding her daddy's hand. Walk as dear children. They're special. Our children are special to us. We are special to God. Walk as dear children. Live a life worthy of Him. Live a life worthy of the calling that you've been called to. Paul reminds us at the end of this book in Ephesians chapter 6. Something just flew past. I don't know if that was a bee or what it was. I guess it was. 610 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Okay, this is who you are. Ephesians, the first part. This is how I want you to live. And now here's how you do it. You can't do it on your own. <laughs> Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of whose might? His might. Not your might, because if you go by your might, you're going to fail. You're going to flub up. You're going to mess up. Is he going to throw you out of the family? Oh, that Miller, oh, he's messed up again. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm pitching him out. No. He sent the Holy Spirit so he'd say, Bob. That is wrong. The way you treated that person, that was wrong. Oh, you're right. Oh, God, your, your word's true. 
I, I shouldn't be I shouldn't be angry and, and I and I with them Lord and because because I when I was angry I sinned. <sighs> I can't do it on my own. He says, here's how you do it. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles, that's the tricks, of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in the high places. Wherefore, therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, not part of it. <laughs> Don't just take part of it. Take the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel and above all things taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Jim spoke on this, I don't know if it was a month ago or how long it's been now, and I was, I, was, I was thinking, you know what? I'm not taking the shield out. The shield of faith. Who, where's faith come from? It comes from God. It's a gift from God. Not a works lest any man should boast. Faith cometh by hearing, Romans says, and hearing by the word of God. I need to take God's word. I have to realize, you know what? There's, there's, there's I'm, much, I'm looking at a news site. And there, there pops up a little thing on the side and it shows, it says, nicest bikinis for 2020. Guess what my eyes want to go do? <laughs> Men. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Ooh, wow. That's a dart. That's a fiery dart sent to destroy me. Get rid of it. <laughs> Click it out. Get rid of it. Take the shield of faith. God, I can't do it. It's a, I, knew, I realize that's a fiery dart from the wicked one. Take the shield of faith. God, I need your help. And you know what happens? He does. He does. But if I go with my own understanding, well, it's just, it's just an ad. Everybody gets to see it. <laughs> Do I need to see that? No. No. That's, that's the wisdom. That's our own wisdom. That's our own thinking. That's what gets us in trouble. We're not taking the armor of God, the faith, and put that shield up and say, God, I, I need you in this one. But when I forget about putting the shield of faith up, guess what happens? I stumble and I fall. And guess what happens if I don't do it completely? Yeah, that looks nice. Oh, oh no, next day. Yep, the root, the, it came back up again. I didn't pluck it out by the roots, right, Bob? Pluck that thing up by the roots and throw it out. Throw it out on the, out on the asphalt and let the, let the sun dry it up and kill it. We are to be strong in the power of God's might, not our own. Not our own might. Because why? I know that's maybe not the proper English. Because I am a child of the King. Live worthy of it. You're a child of God. Walk worthy of that. Walk as dear children. Love as Christ loved. God the Father truly has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Believers are chosen by God. We will stand before Him holy and blameless. He has adopted us into His family. He has made us accepted in the beloved. He has redeemed us with a great price. He has bought us with a great price. Therefore, glorify your God in, the, in your body and spirit, which are God's, as it says in His Word. And He has done this through His blood, giving us the forgiveness of sin. He has abounded unto us all wisdom 
He has made us known to us the mystery of His will, making us Gentiles part of His family. We have obtained an inheritance in Him that does not fade away. We are sealed by His Holy Spirit of promise, which is a down payment of about what we're going to receive in Him. Am I walking worthy of the calling that He has called me to? Are you walking worthy of the calling that He has called you to? If you have the name of Christ stamped on your forehead, the Holy Spirit bearing witness with his, our spirits that we are the children of God. Am I following as, dear, as a dear child? Am I following as a dear child? Am I walking in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God? Take God's armor into the battle. <laughs> Don't go into the battle in your own strength. Remember who you are I have been blessed with spirit, all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ because you are a child of the King. Walk worthy of the calling which you've been called to. Let's close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. Thank you for how you've ministered to my heart through your word. God, I pray that uh, your word would have ministered in the same way to your children here. There's some here that may not be children. They are outside of the promises. God, I pray that you would open their eyes to truth. Jesus, you said that if, if any man would, if he's going to, no man can come unto me except the Father draw him. Lord, uh, Father, I pray that you would just draw those who are not your children to yourself. Open their eyes. Help them to acknowledge truth, God. Lord, that we would be people who would walk worthy of your love. In Jesus' precious name, amen.